Hello and welcome to the fifth video in this series by Leap on scripting in Discovery. This video will take a look at an advanced scripting application where we can create parameters that prompt the user for an input as a script runs. Now this is a really powerful tool for more complex geometry creation and the ability to parameterize that script in a more graphic and more intuitive workflow than say some of the methods we've looked at earlier in this series. So what we have here in this instance, I'll be showing you a completed script and we'll be stepping through that script and explaining how it works. What we have here is a script that has a main function as well as two helper functions. So our main function down the bottom here starts by clearing all of the geometry and it then proceeds to feed a variety, a list of variables into a function called get bolt parameters. And then we have a second function called create bolt geo. Now this script in its entirety is designed to create a very basic model of a bolt and a nut assembled together. The geometry is rather simple, but this serves a really good illustrative purpose of how you might apply these custom user parameters. And then up here, we have our two actual function definitions. Let me start by running the script and showing you exactly what this is designed to do. I'm just gonna reduce the size of this window. And you'll see now that our script has paused partway through and it prompts us for a variety of parameters. Now, these are all parameters that we've defined and we'll show you how to define these in a moment. But essentially here, I'm now able to enter the parameters I want for my current geometric run. I'm able to enter number values. I'm also able to access color drop-down menus. And I'm also able to enter strings. And you'll see that once this is complete, I can select the green tick over here. That script will then resume and continue. And from there, it will then create the geometry as per the parameters we've just entered. By comparison, if I rerun that script, we can make the head of the bolt larger. We can make the thread shorter. We can leave the bolt color as gray and we can position the nut further along the actual thread. If I rerun that now, you'll see that our geometry is recreated, this time with the new parameters. So how do we actually create those custom user inputs and how do we pause a script to allow the user to enter those? That's where our first function comes in. So our first function, get bolt parameters, if I expand that, calls on a class within discovery scripting called input helper. Now input helper has a variety of tools within it. For example, if I go dir and then input helper, you'll see all of the methods and all of the attributes available within that class. So we've got options called create button, create checkbox, color dropdown, combo box, and all of these are further explained within the API, something we showed you in the very first video as to how to access. Let's step through this function and take a look at a few of the examples of how we're creating these parameters. So we start by defining a variable called head diameter. We then call input helper, in this case, dot create text box, because we want to create a box in which the user can enter a value. Now, create text box is then gonna ask for a series of inputs. For example, let's create a new text box. Let's call this one test variable. We're going to go into input helper, dot create text box. And then you'll see that there are various overloads for this function. Now this last method with the four parameters is the one we've used here, and we'll continue to use this for this example, but other values may be suited to your application. So we're going to start with a value. This is the default value that will occupy the text box when it's first shown to the user. Let's make that 55. We're then asked for a string that is the name of that parameter. So let's call this one test variable. We're then asked for a hint. So similar to how you might say hover over a tool and there is a tooltip that appears with more information. This hint allows us to present more information to the user. So let's say this is the additional hint for test variable. And finally, we can enter a value type. To do this, we're going to go to value type. 
and then we've got a vast variety of options. In this case, let's give it positive double. So that's our test variable created. Stepping through the rest of our code, we see that we create a head height, a thread length variable, as well as a nut height and nut position variable. All of these follow the same method. We then create a bolt color and nut color variable. Now in this instance, we're calling on input helper and then create color dropdown. And we've got color.gray, we give it a name and we give it a hint. You'll see that in the color class, there are a variety of options available. This will simply set the default option that the color is set to should the user not want to make any changes. We then create a name variable. Now in this case, we're doing a text box again, but this time our default value is a string. And you'll note that there is no value type specified. So this would allow the user to say, create a name for the assembly, which at the end of our script is assigned to the, which at the end of our script, as you can see over here, is assigned to our geometry. And that's, that name can be either a string or an integer. Next is a crucial step. We need to group all of these variables so that they're presented together as one. To do that, we're creating a variable called group, and then we're calling input helper.createOptions group. This is then going to ask us for a name, in this case, bolt parameters, and then a list of all of the variables we want as a part of that group. So here we have head diameter, head height, thread length, bolt color, nut height, nut position, nut color, and name. Finally, let's add our test variable to this so that that is included in the group. Then we have our result. So our result is input helper dot pause and get input. We give this another name, in this case, again, bolt parameters, and we give this a group. In this case, the group we've defined on line 19 is what we're calling. Finally, we return various values from this function. What I'm going to do instead is create a print statement for our test variable. Now you'll note that test variable is a iScript parameter object. And that's not something we necessarily want to print in most instances. However, test variable followed by a dot gives us access to the values within that parameter. So here we can access the hint text that we've written, the option text, the parameter type. But what we're interested in, in most cases, is the value. So test variable dot value should print for us the double value that we've entered into our new parameter. Create bolt geo is similar to the geometric scripts we've created in the past in this series. So this is simply taking in the variables from our custom user inputs and acting to create that geometry step by step. So now if I give this script a run, we'll see that once again, our parameters are prompted to the user. However, this time we have an additional variable, test variable. Let's set the test variable to say 25.2. We'll leave the rest of the variables as is and hit the green check. That geometry will execute, create as needed. And you'll see that if we go to our console, we have indeed printed our test variable as 25.2. By comparison, if I rerun this, let's try entering a string into test variable. And you'll see that an error is prompted saying that that input string is not in the correct format. You'll also see that if I hover over the, val the box to enter a value for test variable, that we receive that tooltip that we set earlier. So instead, let's enter a value of 100. You'll see that that warning disappears. And now if I hit the green check, our geometry is created. And our test variable is updated and printed to the console. So this serves as a quick overview for an advanced scripting application in Discovery. Now, how you might apply this input helper is really dependent on your needs. This can work for everything from geometry creation from scratch to say manipulating existing geometry to refine it, and also to prepare geometry with name selections for use in say fluent or mechanical. 
That's all for this video. We hope you've enjoyed this series on scripting in Discovery. And if you have any questions, please be sure to reach out to us at Leap Australia. Thank you.